research programme started with a question raised by medical colleagues at KCMC in northern Tanzania about the cause of fevers. Malaria was starting to be well controlled, so what was causing illnesses in patients who were still presenting at hospital with fever? Their study suggested that only a very small proportion, less than 1%, had clinical malaria, while a third of them tested positive for zoonosis linked with livestock. This led to the Bacterial Zoonosis Project, which carried out studies in affected communities as well as in hospitals, and sought to reveal which people and which types of animals were most at risk of zoonotic infections, how they were impacted by zoonotic diseases, their perceptions of the diseases, and what, if any, actions they were able to take to mitigate disease and its impacts. This project differentiated communities by livelihood and agricultural type, including people in smallholder, agro-pastoralist, and pastoral households. Of course, much is changing in northern Tanzania in the face of an uncertain climate, widespread land use changes, and shifts in lifestyles and livelihoods. So the SEEDS project was developed to understand the key drivers of infection prevalence and risk, and thus to anticipate future trends in order to assist with the development of interventions and policy. Key drivers included changes to rainfall. Most significantly, the twice yearly rains became less predictable and droughts have become more frequent and last for longer periods. At the same time, there has been growing pressure on land availability due to increasing human and livestock populations, greater cultivation land cover and conservation policies. Livestock keepers are keenly aware of these changes and have a variety of responses, including a change in herd composition from cattle to sheep and goats, which people perceive to survive better in difficult conditions. Our research has identified sheep and goats as important hosts for zoonotic diseases, particularly brucellosis and cue fever, and also the likely consequences for human health and livestock production. Through our work with communities, we were also alerted to a major but unrecognised problem associated with the fatal parasitic disease caused by tinea multiceps affecting sheep and goats. Losses of up to one third of flocks have been reported in pastoral areas, with major implications for food security and livelihoods of households who are increasingly dependent on sheep and goats. A One Health approach would seek to find the most effective intervention in these connected human and animal systems. From the biomedical perspective, livestock vaccination has been considered a likely option, as vaccines against many livestock diseases are available and used in other parts of the world. However, focus group discussions and interviews with livestock keepers gave us a new appreciation of many challenges. For example, livestock owners place a much higher value on cattle over small stock and are likely to prioritise vaccination of cattle over sheep and goats. Requiring farmers to pay for public health programmes is likely to compound the challenges of designing epidemiologically effective vaccination programmes. Many further issues affect farmers' ability to access animal health services and their trust in these services. Understanding these factors will be critical if livestock vaccines are to fulfil their potential for improving human and animal health in Africa. In setting up our most recent projects, we therefore seek to start with community priorities and use this to co-produce intervention strategies, including behavioural changes, that can be carried out by community members themselves. For example, we are working with communities to help them understand the transmission of tinea multiceps and to develop interventions. We hope to draw on this platform for wider discussions on zoonosis risk factors and mitigation strategies. By adopting a community-led approach, in collaboration with community-based organisations and government health providers, we hope to develop health interventions in a more equitable and sustainable way. Mm -hmm.